In my previous video, I talked about a simple method you could use to start a career as a BI consultant, the skills you need, your target market, and the services you could offer. But how do you quote for these services? In this video, I'll talk about the eight factors that go into quoting for a client project and how to make sure you're not over or more importantly, undercharging. Let's jump in. So when you're quoting for a project, if you don't know what you're doing, it's very easy to underestimate the work involved and the value your work has to the client. There are actually several factors you'll need to consider that will contribute to the final quotation, and I'll go over them one by one. But I'm going to start off by talking briefly about something called the project management triangle. Now, the project management triangle is something that can be applied to pretty much any project, not just the BI projects we're talking about in this video. There tend to be slight variations on the three points of the triangle, but here I'm using scope, time, and cost. The idea is that these three elements are what define a project. The scope is what the actual job entails, the work you're being asked to undertake, also known as the deliverables. Then there's the time being allowed to complete the project and its budget or cost. In the middle, you have the quality of the work. Now, if you were to alter any one of the three elements of the triangle, the quality will be affected. So, for example, if you were to increase the scope of the project without increasing the time or cost afforded to it, the quality is bound to suffer. Conversely, if you reduce the time and cost without also reducing the scope, the same is likely to occur. So, before you start a project, these three elements need to be tied down before you can even attempt to start a costing. All right, let's get on to the eight important factors to take into account when costing a project. The first is pre-sales. In the initial contact with a the client, they'll have a basic outline of the scope of the project and what they're trying to achieve. You might need to spend time doing things like building a demo dashboard to demonstrate how their reports would look, function and fit with their requirements. Then there'll be all the time you spend online or in person discussing the project and its feasibility with the client. You'll probably also spend time writing emails to the client to answer any questions they might have. All of the time you spend on these things needs to be included in the quotation. During the project review stage, you'll be assessing the project at a more detailed level. This means taking the client brief and putting down on paper all of the different queries, the charts, graphs, tables, etc. that will need to be included. You also need to evaluate the feasibility of the more complex analyses that are being requested to see whether the data you have access to can actually create what you need or whether you'll need to do things like writing custom SQL queries. Perhaps the BI tool that's been chosen for the project isn't able to do certain things asked for in the brief. When you've been doing the job long enough, you'll realize that on some projects, there's no way you can be 100% certain that everything desired by the client is feasible without actually doing the job itself. Things will come up that you hadn't counted on, and sometimes at this stage, you don't even have access to the client's data yet. So you're kind of putting your faith in what the client tells you about their data to make your assessment as to what is feasible. Anyway, you just have to do your best to try and translate the client brief into something that you can both agree on as the actual scope of the project. I use a project specifications template that I created myself and that gets appended to the project proposal document. So if you'd like to get hold of a copy, check the link in the description. So basically you're specking out the project, defining where the data comes from, where it's stored, any necessary joins, that kind of thing. This can take a fair amount of time and back and forth with the client, so it's important to make sure you keep track of how much time you've spent on all of these different tasks. Pre-contract admin includes confirming the spec with the client and then putting together the project proposal document that includes the quotation. This document will contain all of the details of the project, scope, time and cost. This can also take a bit of time because of course every project is different. 
but fortunately all quotation documents tend to have the same structure. So once you've created one, it can be repurposed. Once created, you'll need to send it to your client for sign off. Now it's time to estimate how long actually doing the project will take. By this stage, you should already have your project specifications document containing all of the queries you'll need to build and where the data comes from. There's no easy way to calculate the time you'll need, so I just estimate the average time it will take to complete each query. This time will include not just building whatever visualization's been asked for, it's also putting it into the dashboard, designing the dashboard, adding interactivity, setting up dashboard users, etc. You might be tempted to overestimate the time required at this stage to beef up the quote, but as you'll see later on when we do a dummy calculation, that isn't necessary. Just set a realistic amount of time. During the project, you'll want to set up some time for project monitoring. So once you've started the project and you have something to show the client, it's a good idea to get their feedback to make sure you're heading in the right direction in terms of how they envisage the project. Then, depending on how large or small the project is, you'll want to set up other monitoring sessions as well until you deliver the final project. All of these sessions, of course, count towards the total amount of time you'll spend on the project. The next factor to account for is the amount of time you might need for corrections. Perhaps something in the project specifications you agreed upon with the client was incorrect. A different metric needed for a query or a calculation has been poorly spec'd. It can happen, especially when the person you're dealing with isn't as familiar with the data as they could be. Or perhaps the client wants to change some design elements of the dashboard once they've seen an initial draft. In these cases, you'll have to spend time correcting these things. The correct method of calculating how much time you should add for corrections is a percentage. The percentage should be based on both the complexity and the certainty of the project spec. As I just said, sometimes the person you're dealing with isn't 100% sure about everything. In these cases, you'll want to add a higher percentage than if the project is straightforward, there isn't much room for error, and the person you're dealing with knows exactly what they want. Ideally, set three percentages for low, medium and high risk, ranging from say 5 to 20%. Once you've finished the project proper and the client is happy with it, you may need to supply the client with some post-project materials. These could be things like a document or video explaining how to correctly use and interact with the dashboards or a document explaining how some of the content in the dashboards has been calculated. Some projects won't require any post-project materials, but you should confirm this with the client beforehand. Finally, you'll need to add some time for potential contingencies. These are different from corrections in that they relate to things that cannot be foreseen. It's possible that once you start building the project, you find that something isn't actually feasible. Something that you couldn't know without actually doing the project. Or it could be that the specific data that's supposed to go into the dashboard isn't accessible due to data compliance and governance issues. In these cases, you'll need to spend time finding a workaround, and that can take time and can potentially cause a lot of headaches. As with corrections, you should set a percentage for low, medium and high levels based on the complexity of the project and the level of risk that things might not go to plan. Personally, I'd set these levels at 10, 25 and 50%, but it can be any figure between 10 and 50 based on your judgement of the completeness and certainty of the project requirements. 50% sounds like a lot, and it is, but it should only be applied when there really is a high level of uncertainty in a lot of the elements of the project, which is quite rare. Most of the time you'll be applying between 10 and 25%. Again, this percentage is applied to the time you've allocated to creating everything in the project specifications document, the deliverables. So now that we've talked about the eight different factors that go into a project quotation, let's go through an example. 
Let's say you spend three hours in total in pre-sales, building a demo dashboard and discussing requirements with the clients. Then you spend four hours reviewing the client's requirements and putting them all into a project specifications document. Then two hours putting together the project proposal document. For the project proper, let's say you'll need two full days, so 16 hours in total, and you've agreed with the client to meet twice to monitor and review the project. The project is quite straightforward, so you apply 10% for corrections, which works out at 1.6 hours. In terms of post-project materials, the client has asked for an explainer video showing how the dashboards work and the interactivity options available, so you add two hours. For contingencies, again, we'll add 10% due to the low level of risk, another 1.6 hours. So if we add up all of this time, we get to 32.2 hours in total. We only allocated 16 hours for the deliverables, which means that we've basically ended up with double that amount of time. It sounds like a lot, but that is the reality of undertaking a project. It might be that the project is really straightforward, the client knows exactly what they want, and they don't need any post-project materials. In this case, the number of hours comes down to 27.2 instead, a multiple of 1.7. you now have the total number of hours you'll be allocating to the entire project. You then need to multiply this by your hourly rate. This obviously begs the question, what should my hourly rate be? Well, honestly, I can't tell you that. I know what mine is, but yours will depend on the market in which you'll be working. This is something you know best, or at least you should do. One thing I will say is not to undervalue yourself. Your skill set, if you have all of the requisite skills I talked about in my previous video, is one that is quite hard to come by. Not everyone can do what you do, so you need to bear this in mind. Then you need to consider things like how your work will benefit the client in terms of improved business performance and time saved. Once you've got your quotation down, you'll need to include it in a project proposal document that sets everything out related to the project. I'm going to create a separate video for this subject that I'll post here when it's done. Until then, there'll be another equally as informative video in its place. If you found this video useful, please do like, share and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you soon for another video. Until then, stay BI Curious.